So Aries, for those who may not be aware, is a web application that was released last year uh, that provides a replacement for what used to be the Achilles web application. And one of the things that Aries does is combine both the Achilles and the DQD results from a database characterization of the CDMs um, and puts that all into one application in addition to it just being an, an updated technology stack for, um, for use. But this year, what was added to um, Aries and uh, what we um, presented at the Odyssey Symposium as a software demo was the uh, network feasibility tool. So in the ina initial stages of study design, sometimes it's challenging to know which data source from a broad data network might be useful to include based on that study's requirements. And it's not necessarily the case that phenotype development or specific inclusion and exclusion criteria had been finalized at study inception. So it prevents a full evaluation from being conducted. However, um, providing a high level tool for evaluating a network of data sources along a wide range of potential high level requirements without requiring any kind of access to the person level data would provide a valuable capability for that initial study feasibility assessment. So as I mentioned with Achilles and data quality dashboard data available within Aries, it gave us an opportunity to try to leverage that information to perform that type of a high level characterization. And so if I go into Aries, um, there is now a data source feasibility tool. Um, so one thing um, for those who were at the Odyssey Symposium, you saw Patrick present data diagnostics at a database level based on an R package whose development was led by Claire Blackner. And Claire and I work very closely, and one of the things that we're trying to ensure is that there's as much consistency and feature parity between what that package is doing and the analyses that you're able to do within this ARIES data source feasibility tool. Um, they're complementary approaches. In the case of the R package, that means that if you include that as part of a, a study package, that could be distributed and run at individual sites, providing that database characterization and diagnostics back to a, uh, a, a network study as part of just a package without any kind of web infrastructure or anything else. Whereas here with what uh, the ARIES data source feasibility tool provides, if you are in a location where you have centrally collected um, Achilles or data quality dashboard data, it gives you the ability to do this through a web interface without dropping into our packages um, and, and building your study criteria that way. So how the tool works is um, you can make selections in a variety of requirements. So for example, I'll start here with domain requirements. Let's say I know that for my study, I'm going to need people that have at least one condition occurrence and at least one drug exposure. Um, what this has now done is gone off and found people that have that combination of criteria, at least one condition occurrence and at least one drug exposure. And for each data source, it returns the count of the number of people, um, as well as the proportion of people in the database that actually meet that criteria. So that's at a very high level for domain requirements, uh, requiring that co-occurrence of data across multiple domains. Another thing that it provides is the ability to say, well, what if I, uh, don't necessarily need to know that people have at least one of each criteria, but I just want to know that data in a particular domain is available. So let's say my study is going to include some assessment of mortality, so I need to ensure that death data is available, meaning at least one record is sitting in the death table. Um, by selecting these desired domains, you can get a yes-no Boolean evaluation for the data sources that include that data. The next uh, section allows you to specify range requirements. So let's say I want to limit my study and I'm going to say people need to be between the ages of 30 and 75. Um, I could specify that as long as an observation year range and a range of minimum cumulative observation. So you'll notice that as I adjust these range requirements, all of the databases here in my list then provide me with um, a assessment for each of those individual range. So I could see the percent in the age range, the percent that meet this specific cumulative minimum observation, 
um, and uh, gives me a, a readout for each of the databases. I could then go on and make requirements around visits to say that I require that there have been at least um, some amount of inpatient or outpatient visits captured in this in across the network. And once again, I'll receive a breakout for this particular requirement um, for all the data sources that are in my network. Um, I won't drop into this, but essentially you could then specify individual concept IDs that you need to have exist within your data source, and you will get back listings of the data sources and how many of those concept IDs exist. At the end of all of this, um, you then get a final report um, where all of those initial requirements that we've specified across the, uh, the different areas are compiled into a, a final estimate. So where the um, starting source population is shown and then the percent required domains, that first thing we added, the desired domains, the percent cumulative observation, percent population by age, percent observed, percent visit types, all of the criteria that had been previously specified are combined in a, uh, I, I guess I would say non-deterministic way where creating an estimate. So if there was 20% met in one thing and 30% met in the other thing, the combination of those two will provide the most conservative estimate um, across both. Um, because this is just using the high-level data characterization, we're not explicitly going out and finding um, the overlap of all of these that meet all the criteria specific at a person level. We're just combining them to be a conservative estimate. So you'll see the percent of the um, or the estimated population here that um, meets the criteria that were specified across all the different ranges. So this is a, a quick web-based uh, tool that leverages the Achilles and data quality dashboard data in order to make sure that you have a high level feasibility assessment that can be performed um, readily within a, uh, a a network, or in this case, um, within our infrastructure here, where we do have multiple data sources available. Excellent, Frank. Thank you so much for for doing that, uh, especially on short notice. Um, <laughs> any questions uh, for Frank? Reminder, if you missed any of this, we'll record obviously we'll record this just as we did the presentations um, and we'll have it on the community calls page later. Uh, so if you want to see it again. Uh, Cynthia. Oh, this this is a fantastic tool. Um, are the databases in some centralized location or is it going out to where the source data are actually housed? Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, no, I understand. So if you if you think about it, um, just in terms of what the application uh, requires, uh, it requires that the Achilles and uh, DQD data have been centrally collected. So. Um, for how that typically works in an environment, once um, a CDM has been ETL'd into the common data model, um, most sites will then run Achilles and data quality dashboard, which can then export their results. So it's not person level data. It doesn't require that the databases are centrally located, just that that small extract of the database characterization files are available. In our case here, I'm looking at um, uh, our internal network at Jensen. So we have, you know, a dozen or more uh, data that have been licensed and converted to the CDM. We pull all of those um, files together onto one server, and then the ARIES tool is able to uh, make use of them from that central location. So this does not require access to the database. This does not require um, web API be available. It just requires that the files um, that are generated by Achilles and DQD are, are stored in a central location. So in theory, if everyone across the Odyssey community were able to share their um, Achilles results and their DQD results, we could have a centralized ARIES platform that allowed us to conduct this type of network feasibility across the entire network um, as quickly and as easily as what I just did with our demo. 
without access to patient level data. As a follow on, um, in the um, IRB approvals for those individual databases, does there have to be a specification that um, these aggregated data can be moved? Uh, results on these aggregated data can be, you know, moved to some central platform. I think that that varies by uh, by site. So I I know, for example, uh, if it's a data source that we license we're not permitted to then share the complete aggregated characterization of those data um, for the entire database. So if um, it would it would require each uh, site and depending on both um, their where, where they are geographically or where their data source comes from or how it's licensed or what their privacy rules are, everyone would have to make that determination. It's one of the reasons we generally don't have something like that for the Odyssey community is that most uh, organizations aren't in a position to share um, the complete uh, data characterization. Thank you, Cynthia. Any other questions? Uh, no, thank you very much, Frank. Wonderful uh, presentation. Thank you. Uh, Raj posted in the chat early in the talk. Frank mentioned an R package that does something similar to Aries. Can you add a link to its name repo? So I don't know, Frank, if you're able to um, add that to the chat at some point. Sure, that's the database diagnostics package. That's in the Odyssey um, GitHub repo. Uh, that's the package that uh, the output from which Patrick included in his presentation at the Odyssey Symposium. But I'll drop a link to the repo in the chat. 